Since its inception in 2009, numerous entrepreneurs have pitched their companies on the show. However, some of the most memorable products to come from it are also the worst ones. While some of the products or companies never really made it off the ground, appearing on the show has been a pivotal moment for many entrepreneurs. Of course, the sharks also shatter many dreams and trigger waterworks from contestants along the way. Every once in a while, a product comes along that makes you wonder how someone could come up with that idea. However, there's been a long history of bad deals along with the good ones and missed opportunities, but some take the cake as the worst deals in history of the show. Sometimes, the brand skyrockets to sell millions of the investments of a shark, while other times, the sharks make a terrible call and the companies become nothing but a scam. With that said, let's take a look at 10 Shark Tank companies that blew the investors' money. When Brian and Noah came into the tank in season 6, they were hoping to attract a shark to invest 35000 into their business. Paper box pilots sell sticker kits that turn a plain old ordinary box into imaginative aeroplanes, fire engines and race cars. They also brought along another board member, 5 year old younger brother Milo, who Brian explained was the FO of the company, the chief fun officer. Since Kevin O'Leary is the shark most suited to the children's toy industry, it comes as no surprise that he was interested. He managed to strike a deal and invest 35000 in exchange for a 50% equity stake. However, Paperbox Pilot's business has not made any significant strides forward in the year and a half since its first appearance on Shark Tank. Today, many of the items seem to be out of stock and the company's social media has not been updated since 2018. After learning about the 33 billion plastic cups that end up in landfill each year, Chelsea Briganti and Lee Ann Tucker formed Lollyware in 2015. Lollyware is the edible bioplastics company on a mission to reduce plastic waste and create a sustainable future with the world's first edible drinking cup. Their edible cups are designed to serve drinks and desserts at events and are flavoured to complement any meal. Cuban and Caracan decided to partner up and invest 600,000 for 25% of the company and 100% all-natural non-GMO compostable edible cups were seen by many as a perfect solution to growing plastic problems. Unfortunately, lolly cups were a little too good to be true. Despite their best intention, they couldn't quite figure out a formula for the cups that could survive to ship. In Season 1, Kwame Kwade pitched a web-based company that buys back and sells some of the 10% of all unused gift cards each year in the US and called Gift Card Rescue. He asked for 150000 in exchange for 30% equity stakes, but got the deal for 200000 for a 50% equity stake, while Robert Herjavec and Kevin O'Leary also got 5% royalty for the agreement. After appearing on the show, Gift Card Rescue was featured in an article within the New York Times, Forbes, Wall Street Journal and a list of many other widely familiar publications. Having such a large increase in sales and popularity, this company became one of the most successful ones to have been aired on Shark Tank. However, as reported by the Baltimore Sun, Gift Card Rescue shut down in 2016, not long after their Shark Tank appearance. When Shelley Isler crossed the towel with Poncho, she got a patent for her creation called Show No Towels. After she licensed it out to Legoland and Six Flag Magic Mountain, she decided to appear on the show where she asked for 50000 and managed to strike a deal with Laurie Grainer. However, the partnership had a bitter end. After the show and the deal turned wretched and fell apart, Grainer kicked her to the curb and after six years, the business ended. Isla wrote on her blog, Shark Tank deal with Laurie Grainer turned crap. I once cursed my Shark Tank partner for kicking me to the curb, but now I thank her. She taught me so much more than she thought she did and none of it was about business. The Kate app helps people being unfaithful in their relationships wipe their phones so that secretive messages are not visible to their spouses. A West Palm Beach police officer developed it after a colleague got divorced because his wife saw text messages between him and his mistress. The founder of KTAP claims he didn't set out to sell a cheetah app, but marketing for the app includes the word mistress and advertises tools to block calls and texts so your spouse doesn't see them. It was definitely strange that a product like this entered the show. Sharks Kevin O'Leary and Damon John teamed up to invest 70000 for a 35% stake in it. 
After the episode aired, they got 10,000 new downloads and most of the new customers were women. However, it looks like it did not go far. The last update from the company's Twitter account was in 2013 and there are no news articles about it since that time and the website is down. Sweet Balls is a cake company owned by James McDonald and Cole Edgar, who made their pitch to the Sharks asking for $250,000 for 25% of the company. Mark Cuban bit on the deal, but it wasn't long before things took a nasty turn. It turns out that business partners didn't have a good relationship and got into a lawsuit after the show. Cole Egger made a non-negotiable offer to buy out McDonald's ownership, making McDonald sue Egger for the breach of contract. Things got even messier when Sweetballs.net was redirected to Cakeballs.com, which Egger controlled. This led to McDonald asking for a restraining order according to the Shark Tank blog. This is one of the most embarrassing and messy deals ever to come out of Shark Tank. Daniel Wood and David Marzinski pitched their product in Season 4 and made a deal with Kevin O'Leary and Robert Hajavec. After they asked for $300,000 in exchange for 10% equity stake, they managed to strike a deal for $300,000 but at 33% equity stake. Focus Designs is the maker of the self-balancing unicycle, or the SBU for short, and since they got the deal, they added two new versions of the SBU to their product line and the unicycle was featured on popular shows such as Mythbusters and Toss Show. However, while the team behind Focus Designs all seem to still be involved, the Amazon product links are broken and the website returns an error. Their social media has been sitting untouched since September of 2015. When Nikki Pope appeared on Shark Tank, she was hoping to get an investment from one of the sharks to grow her toy renting service called Toy Guru. The company called itself the Netflix of toys and enabled customers to rent toys each month. Since kids get tired of their toys pretty quickly today, the business seemed like a good idea. So Mark Cuban and Kevin O'Leary invested $200,000 for 35%. However, the company filed for bankruptcy. A couple of years ago, there were signs of Toy Guru going bankrupt, especially after they posted a banner on their website claiming they couldn't just take on any new members because of an explosive growth and officially closed in 2016. When asked what their worst deal was in an interview, both Cuban and O'Leary called out Toy Guru. Charles Michael Yin was the first entrepreneur to get the Shark Tank sweep and partner all five sharks and the first ever winner of a million dollar deal for his product called Breathometer. This invention was a device that acted as a portable breathalyzer and could be plugged onto the audio jack of a smartphone. It would give a reading of the blood alcohol level and feed it back to the user so that they could know if they could legally operate a motor vehicle or find a ride. However, according to the Federal Trade Commission, the breathometer was found to be far less accurate than promised, sometimes reporting low blood alcohol readings when it was in fact unsafe to drive. The company first tried to fix the problem by updating the app to overestimate results. However, since that could not solve the problem, they discontinued the device without telling customers or retailers why. Since Jack Barringer had struggled with losing weight, his doctor told him to start doing push-ups, which he found a challenging thing to do. So he came up with something that would help him out. The body jack is a machine that will help you do push-ups. However, when he made his pitch to the Sharks, Barbara Crocken told him he needed to lose £30 to get an investment from her and Kevin Harrington which he soon did. Corocon had put up 50000 into the deal, however, Body Jack turned out to be a big flop. The company had seemingly fallen apart without any given reason. My worst was investing in a fast-talking cowboy selling exercise equipment who needed to lose £50, Corocon told Forbes. Instead, he lost my 50000 That's it for our top 10 Shark Tank companies that blew the investors' money. Let us know down below if you were shocked by any of them and give us some suggestions as to what you'd like to see next. Leave us a like if you liked the video and subscribe if you want to keep up to date with our latest content. But that's it for today and we'll see you in the next one.